this is Brian. Thank you so much for watching Keys Motorsports. As always, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. So, a common thing with BMW F30s is they don't come with backup cameras. Same thing with F15, F25, and many other BMWs. So today, not only are we going to show you how to install the Beamer Tech MMI rear view camera, we're going to install an Apple TV3. Now, if you're interested in any of the products you see in today's video, we do have them available at keysmotorsports.com, so be sure to see the links in the description. Now, whenever you're working with any electronics in your vehicle, it's always a good idea to remove the negative terminal of your battery, which is done with a 10 millimeter and a microfiber towel. Now, the purpose of the microfiber towel is to make sure that no one closes your trunk once you disconnect your battery, because with these electronic locks, it makes it very difficult to get back in. So now that we have that all tied up to make sure that no one's going to shut it, we can remove this compartment over here. And then with our 10 millimeter, we're going to disconnect the negative terminal of the battery. So just loosen it up, pull it off, push it down to the side. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to remove these plastic sleeves right here. We're going to remove the emergency trunk release, and then we're going to remove this carpeting. So to do so, just press right here, and this is going to release. There's another one down here. So just press like that. You can slide this down, pull it out of the way. Do the same thing on the other side. To remove the emergency release handle, you're going to press this little center part in, pull that wire towards you. It's going to come right off just like that. Now we're going to remove eight of these plastic fasteners. The way that these work, they have a little Phillips head on them. You very carefully unscrew them just like that, and they pull out like so. Now there's two T25s. We're going to remove these. And we're going to rock the carpet down just like that. Pull it off and we'll set this in a safe place. Now what we can do is we can remove the old handle and install the new one. So as you can see on the new handle, it's fully molded. So there's the handle and there's also the fully integrated camera. The way that these work are there's these little clips they're going to be on all sides. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to reach up, you're going to press the clip in, and then slowly just pull these down. So what I like to do is I like to start on one side. Again, just very carefully press in those tabs. And then you'll be able to start to push it out. Okay, there's those two. Okay. And there we have it. Now what we need to do is we need to take this blue piece, we need to take it off and transfer it onto our new handle. So to do this, we're just going to need a, a pick tool. Start to release these tabs, we'll release it on this side. And then we'll also re release it on this side. Okay, just like that. Then you're going to take this handle, you're going to clip it on just like that. And you want to test it to make sure you hear an audible click. All right, the switch works great, so let's keep going. You're gonna take your wire, stick it through this little hole, just like that. And you're gonna take your camera, you're gonna line it up, and then just snap it right into place. Okay, just like that. Looks like it came from the factory. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to route this wire along this other wire loom right here and we're going to be securing it with this installation tape. So this stuff's really great. It's easy to use and it's gonna make sure there's no rattles. Now once you get to this point, what we can do is we can install our rear view camera cable. So just take this. Make sure that you have everything lined up. On the one side, there's going to be a little notch and a little cutout. So line those up, clip them into place just like that. And then either take some heat shrink or some electrical tape and just wrap that up to make sure that that's not going to come disconnected. Then continue securing this wire to the existing wire harness. At this point, we need to get this cable behind this carpet. So to do so, we need to remove two of these plastic fasteners. So basically how these work are there's this little centerpiece. It looks just like that. And then you have your base piece that looks like that. Then you can remove the shopping bag hook. Just like that. After that, you can bend this piece of plastic over here and just very carefully rock your carpeting down.
Now when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you leave a little bit of slack because you need to account for your trunk opening and closing. You want to make sure that your cable isn't going to get ripped out. So once you've done that, let's just continue routing this along this wire harness right back here. Now we need to continue feeding our rear view camera cable up to the front of the car. So to do so, if you have folding seats, you want to pull that and rock the seat down. Now with the seat folded down, it's going to give us easy access to this piece. We're actually going to be removing it. So to do so, you want to put your hands behind it and you're just going to pull towards you just like that. It's going to come out, lift it up, and you can see the clips that hold it into place. So we're just going to set this over here for now. Now what we're going to do is just rock this up. Don't lock it in place. And we are going to lift the lower portion of the seat. So to do so, you want to reach kind of where it would be between your passenger's legs. And again, just lift up just like that. Now we can take our trim tool. There's another one of these plastic fasteners right here. We're just going to move that out of the way. And by doing that, we're going to be able to get our rear view camera cable completely behind. Now when you're doing this, be mindful of the seat belt location. You want to make sure that you go under and around. And as you can see, we have our wire harness. We can take our tape and continue securing it. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put that up and out of the way. And now that we have this loose, we can see that we have another one of these plastic fasteners. Sometimes it's easiest if you just grab some needle nose pliers, pull the center out, move that out of the way. And then what you can do is you can just get this piece and you can just very carefully lift it up just like that, you can set it out of the way. Now the way the BMW trim works, if you're not familiar with it, is it has these little fasteners right here and they slide into a track. Now what's going to happen is most of them are probably going to get stuck in the actual car and you're going to need some pliers to pull them out. So once you pull them out, you slide them back into the track and then they'll press right back into place. Next what we're going to do is we're going to remove this piece right here. There's basically a fastener right here and one on the other side. So we're just gonna pop this in preparation to remove it. So just slide your hand under, get that one loose. Then we'll move up to the front seat. Continue removing trim. Set this piece over here. Now the other side of this is already popped. There's just one more fastener. So get your hand under here and then you can pop it. It's going to slide down and then it'll slide out. So here you can see, there's just these two little clips that hold it in place. And to reinstall it, you just slide it over and there's a little groove right there and you just slide it up. So you slide it up and then clip the bottom in. Then what you can do is you can continue running your rear view camera cable along this wire harness, securing it every foot or so. Now to reinstall this piece, what you wanna do is just slide it down and then you just clip it in the top. Just make sure the leather and everything is nicely tucked in on both sides, you're good to go. Now what you're going to need to do is you need to remove this piece of plastic trim under here. So to do that, there's two 10 millimeter nuts on this side. And then there's one over here. Then what you can do is just take your hand, just like this, and very carefully slide this piece down like this, and then just remove any of these connections. And we can move this and set it in a safe place. And we can just take this piece right here, just very carefully pop it up, set it to the side. Now the way that this kit works is it uses the multimedia interface to basically take that camera signal and display it on your factory screen. Now if your car doesn't have navigation, a lot of times you can tuck this away under the radio. However, on cars that have navigation, it's kind of tight under there, but there's a really nice cavity right here between your head unit and also your glove box where we can mount this and also the Apple TV. Now, in order to get to it, we do have to lower the glove box, but it's a pretty easy process, so let's do that now. Now, to do this, what we need to do is first remove this end piece right here. I'm just gonna pull this trim down, make it a little bit easier to get out. Pull that out just like that. We'll set that to the side. Now in here, this is the most commonly missed screw when people try to remove their glove box and it gets stuck and they don't know why. So if you look in here, there is a T25. We're gonna remove that first so we don't forget about it. In this car, it's a T20, but we've also seen in some cars it's a T25. So 
it's a good idea to just have both of those bits available. Now most of the screws of the glove box are easy to get to, but for whatever reason, BMW put two T20s, they put one on this side and one on the other side. The way that you have to get to it is you have to remove the airbag. Now, we're not going to be completely disconnecting the airbag, but we are going to be lowering it. So grab yourself a T30, and we're going to carefully remove these bolts. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna rock it back here just like that. Again, there's no need to disconnect it, so just leave everything connected. Now with that out of the way, we can remove this T20, and then one over here. Then under here, there's four more T20s. So I like to use this DeWalt 90 degree tool. Very helpful, especially in tight spots like this. Once that's done, what we can do, just very carefully pull, just like that. And just make sure that you have everything disconnected. There's typically only a handful of connections, probably three or four in your car. Then once you remove all those, you can put this in a safe place. Now for this next part, I like to cover everything with microfiber towel to make sure nothing will get scratched. So once you have everything well protected like that, you can take a trim tool, you just put it up here, and you can release the clips. Just rock that down just like that, and you can disconnect that connection. Next, we're going to slowly and carefully remove the dash trim here. So just get your hands under here, just like that. There's two clips that secure it in on the end over here. So once you have it out, what you can do, is you can press from behind and your hazard button will pop out. This is the easiest way to get this connection off. So once you do that, disconnect that. And you can undo this other connection right over here and set this in a safe place. Next, we're going to remove the four screws to hold this piece of trim in. And you can pull this down and disconnect this connection right over here. Now this has the LCI trim, so it has some extra wire, so it doesn't really need to go anywhere. So we're just gonna keep it right over here for now. Now what we can do is we can remove these four T20s that hold the head unit in place. Then there's two T20s that secure the screen in place. Next, we're going to take our head unit. We're going to carefully slide this out and over here. Then you're gonna take your quad lock. So this is that, that big block connection. This is going to go into the head unit and this is going to go into this harness that we're going to remove from the factory head unit. The way that this works is it has this little lever. You just pull up on the lever and it's going to pull the entire quad lock out of the head unit. Now, one of the things that we're going to need to do is, as you can see over here, there's two fiber optic cables. We're going to need to remove those and insert them in our new quad lock. So to do that, you wanna apply a little bit of outward pressure and then lift this tab right here. And then this will come right out just like that. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this, we're gonna put it in this end spot of our new harness here. Clip it in just like that. Then once you've done that, you can take this, just plug it right into the back of your head unit. Make sure that everything is, is nice and lined up, just like that. And then you can push this lock down and it's gonna lock in place. Now with the other side, you're just going to take it and you're going to hook it in to the other end of the quad lock, just like that. Then take the cables that stem the quad lock and you're going to just reach back here and feed them out this opening. Just like that. Next, what we're going to do is lift up on our screen gonna come out just like that and there's one little connection in the back so just press in this tab now this could be a little bit tough to do so just work at it and you'll get it okay what we can do is take our factory video cable and we're gonna route this over here out this cavity we're gonna need that in just a minute then we're going to take our new video cable 
we're going to run this over here. Just like this, and again, we're gonna feed all of our wires down into this glove box area. Now you can take your new cable, plug it into your screen, and we can reinstall the screen. Now what we need to do is we need to configure the dip settings. So basically what this is going to do is this is going to tell the car if there's a backup camera, if there's an Apple TV or another device such as a front camera. So what we're going to do, we're going to leave all of the descriptions of what each of these dip switches do down in the description. That's going to be definitely the easiest way to go about this. Now what we can do is we can plug everything in. So we have our power in our CAN cable. We have all of our accessories, all of our RCAs, our USBs and whatnot. Then the nice new video cable is going to go into LVDS out. The existing video cable is going to go into LVDS in, but it's kind of short, so I'm going to have to plug that one in at the last moment there. But now what we can do is we can plug in our rear view camera, so take that yellow connection and it's going to say RCAM. Then find the white connection that also says RCAM. We can plug that one in as well. Now what we're going to do is we are going to mount our Apple TV to our multimedia interface, just like that. Then we're going to plug an HDMI cable into the Apple TV. And we're going to plug the other one into HDMI 1. These Apple TVs are specially engineered to be able to work in your car. So as you can see, it's powered by USB. So you can just take our USB, plug it right into that USB connection. Now stemming off of the quad lock is this one, it's going to say audio in, and you're also from the MMI, you're going to have one that says audio out. So what you want to do is you want to connect these. Now sometimes, it depends on, on your configuration of your head unit and whatnot, sometimes you'll be able to get audio through this and sometimes you'll have to use an external cable. So I'm guessing with this car we're going to have to use an external cable, but we always like to start here and see if it works. Uh, typically MBT and MBT Evo cars work with this, but CIC does not. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go plug that LVDS in from the factory BMW head unit. I'm going to tidy up some of these wires and I'm going to mount it over here and we'll show you the end result. Now what you can do is you can press this quad lock down. It's a little bit tough to do. Pull your hand out and then slide your head unit back into place. And then what we want to do before I wrap all the wires up is we just want to do some testing. So I'm going to put that other face plate back on here. We're going to fire up the car and make sure everything works. All right, the first thing we're going to test is the rear view camera. So just by placing the car in reverse, we have a beautiful screen. As you can see, it's the trunk's open, so it's pointed at the sky. As you'll see on the screen, these kits have dynamic parking lines. Basically what that means is as you turn the wheel, these lines are gonna move to help you park easier. Now what we're going to do is we are going to test the Apple TV. So to activate this, we're just gonna hold the menu button down for a couple seconds. So then what we can do is we can activate our Apple TV by pressing the number eight or by holding menu. Number eight's a little bit easier, but we'll just flip that over. And as you can see, we have an amazing Apple TV three screen. Uh, complete with screen mirroring. As you can see, it's complete with mirroring, so you can use Google Maps, Waze, and many other apps. Now, during our testing, we did identify, as we suspected, that the audio is not working in this configuration, so what we need to do is we need to take our audio outs, and we need to use the supplied cable, and what we're going to do with the other end is we're going to just run it up through here. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. Into our armrest. Now the Apple TV uses the aux audio for the car. So all we're going to do is we're just going to sneak this in here. Up through it's going to be completely hidden. And we're going to just plug it into the aux jack over there. So. All right, so for this, what you're going to do, just tuck it under here, just like that. Then once you get here, what you need to do is just get some kind of hanger or fishing line and remove the rubber tray that's down here. And you can just take this, I'm gonna feed it down just like that and we'll secure this end with a very small piece of electrical tape. And we'll just very carefully guide it up just like that. Then what we're going to do is just take this, we're gonna plug it right into the aux jack right there, 
Then if you like, you can wrap the excess cable up and just slide it back in here. You can put your little tray back in. Look at that, nice and neat. And when this is closed, it's completely hidden. Okay, at this point, everything is fully installed, fully functional, and it's amazing. So if you are in the market for a rear view camera for your BMW, be sure to check out keysmotorsports.com. We also have things like Apple TVs, Apple CarPlays, and much more. Yeah, my name is Brian. Thank you so much for watching Keys Motorsports. As always, be sure to give us a like. Make sure to subscribe. Check us out at keysmotorsports.com. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.